Okay, so I know we're kind of cheating because we have almost everything out of the way. But uh, this is going to be the start of a coolant reroute video. We're getting the Fly Miata. Well, we're getting it from Fly Miata. It's the 9 for 9 Super Miata coolant reroute kit. With a nice plate that blocks off there. And a nice housing for the back. So, what we were worried about was how hard is it going to do with the motor still in the car. And uh, we're going to find out and hopefully help everyone else with it. Ignore the fact that it looks pretty empty because assuming nothing's taken off of your car, you'd have a rad and an intake. So we'll pretend they're in the way and we'll try to guide you through the process of doing the Fly Miata coolant reroute kit. Okay, so first things first, will be to take those, uh, hopefully you can see, the couple connectors that are plugged into it One's going to be your temperature sensor, and one's going to be, wait, I oh, never mind, I think there's only one plugged into it. Okay, so a temperature sensor back there. And then you have your heater hose, that's just this guy here, and uh, we'll take that off too. Trying to get the clamp off of the heater hose and the back of the motor there. Watch your fingers, I don't finish yet. Right. Oh, there we go. Okay. Jeebus, Jesus Christ. <sighs> See if you can twist it. It wasn't that tight. Okay, I'm gonna get this finger loose because I can't even ratchet. Okay, you're gonna. I can, I can probably get it. Top one? Yeah. Okay, so we just got the bolt and the nut off the stud, so it popped right off. And the heater hose was super hard, so we just left it on. So we're gonna pull this out now. And there's the factory housing. So let's see if we can get it off the car at least. Take it off the other end. Or I guess. I guess we can leave it on the car, right? Yeah, but it's that good of a seal. Oh my. Use a little <laughs> orange screwdriver, maybe. And pierce it through my hand. Yeah. There it goes. Holy. Okay. There's the old housing. Now we'll just have to pull that sensor out and it goes into the new one. So now that you have the back of the motor uh, cleaned up, the old housing off and the gasket removed, you'll be ready to assemble your uh, bypass or I guess reroute kit and uh, get it installed. So first things first, we'll have to put the thermostat in there. You have one of these C-clips. You'll want to wear safety glasses because if they slip out and fling off, you're pretty much dead. So I don't have the proper tool, but these screwdrivers do fit in the end, so I'm hoping they're gonna work.
Okay, there we go. So it's in, and you'll want to line up the gap with the little uh, notch for the bypass, or else if this is spun, it'll just be blocking off the uh, little coolant bypass there, and you'll have no flow like when the thermostat's closed. It's in there, and that's going nowhere. Next step will be assemble the, I guess, the thermostat housing and outlet to the actual body. It goes on just like that with three Allen screws. But we put silicone sealant on this side before doing so. So they came with, or they supplied a little thing of our TV, which is nice. So you just want to put a little bit around the rim of the housing. <clears throat> so one's that good. You take this. And you can see it comes to a point here. The point goes next to the shoulder here. So that goes on just like that. Now the rounded one, the rounded head screw, goes on that pointed side. And the other two go in right there and there. Two different sizes, but so six mil and five mil. And now tighten those down nice and tightly, and then you can wipe off the excess uh, sealant. So with that assembled, you can go ahead and take your factory sensor. This one comes out of the housing at the back of the motor. Uh, we put some thread tape on it. You don't necessarily need to, it has a seal, but we don't want things to leak once everything's installed. So it is installed there. And you want to tighten that down pretty tight because it's not a tapered thread, it's an actual seal. That's not the right size. Um, but anyway, so then you'll take the large fitting for the heater hose. It's a tapered thread, so you won't have to tighten it down too, too much. But we also put uh, thread tape on that. And yeah, since this is a tapered thread, it will bind up pretty quick. And you won't don't want to over tighten it or else you'll just strip it out and then you're dead in the water. The little bleeder screw comes already with sealer on it. It goes on the top, and again, tapered thread, so it doesn't have to be too tight. Uh, that one is a 12 mil. And uh, lastly will be a little plug for here because we on our we have a 2001 NB we don't have any other sensors to go into this at the back so you'll thread a plug into there again with some sealant so once you have everything assembled the next step will be to put uh, some silicone here but we actually in fact have gaskets for it so we're gonna go ahead and install a gasket for there which might end up being a bit easier because with the silicone there, trying to maneuver it into the back of the car might get tricky. So we're gonna actually use a factory gasket, uh, even though the instructions just call for the silicone. So we'll put that on with a gasket. And then next thing will be the front plate, 
We're also going to put that one on with a gasket. But in that one, we will install the plug with some thread tape. And then we have a Mishimoto. Uh, where's the. We had a Mishimoto inline housing. We're going to take this our coolant sensor that we had for that one and swap it into the front of this. So we'll tighten that down too. So now that you're ready to install this on the car, uh, you can put this on after obviously, but we found that the hose was actually pretty tricky to get on this. So we're gonna go ahead and put it on now and tighten the clamp and everything, and then just work around it getting it on the car. Yeah, as you can see, it is a nice tight fit. And you can even heat up the hose a little bit, just in hot water, and it'll make a bit more pliable. So once you got everything assembled, you'll be ready to put it on the car. So like I said before, you can either use silicone here, or we're gonna go ahead and use a gasket on that. And you can see we cut our silicone hose short. You'd wanna leave it long to go to your rad, but we actually built a hard line that goes from the rad down the frame rail and back up. So ignore this step for everyone pretty much. That's specific to our setup. And you'll see that in a little while. So time to go to the car and get this installed. Okay, so we just went to test fit. And in our case, it's gonna be easier to leave the hose off because it was hard enough getting the hose onto our hard pipe. But for anyone who's running the soft pipe all the way to the rad, it will be okay to put the soft pipe on now and work around it. But in our case, we're gonna leave it off and get that in the car first and then put that on there. So obviously you know it's pretty tight back there. What we found easiest was to go in underneath the heater hoses uh, but we're going to use a gasket so we don't have to worry about silicone. If you were to use silicone, you'd want to make sure you test fit and practice getting it in there so you don't mess up all your uh, silicone RTV trying to get it in there. And usually to film out here, we'd turn off the pond. But, not sure if you can tell, there's about, I'd say, half an inch to an inch of ice on that. And if we shut it off, it'll freeze solid and our fish will die. So, sorry about the extra noise. It's currently negative 39 with the wind chill. Celsius, so yeah, it's cold out here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that bolt in there now to hopefully hold the gasket in place. Now this needs to sit like that at the back of the motor with the stud in the bottom, and it'll reuse the nut from uh, the original housing. So let's see if we can get this in. Like I said, go up underneath here seems to be the easiest way. Now I haven't done this with the thermos or with the gasket yet, so. We'll see how it goes. So this is a, when, especially when it's minus 30 in here, minus 35, it makes things a little trickier, but there is room. Um, a little bit of phlegma. Now that uh, everything's tight to mount it to the motor, we can go ahead and put the heater hose onto the driver side of it, onto the barbed fitting. And then we'll go ahead and, well, for most people, you'd put the entire length of the rubber silicone hose on there and run it all the way up to your rad. We're gonna have a little extra step that we can show you guys in case you're interested in doing something similar. But yeah. But as you can see, it fits a little loose. So, once you get the... <laughs> so, just get the heater hose on in there. And tighten it down with the gear clamp. And double check it's tight on there. Oh yeah, it's going nowhere. Then... Yeah, you know, get your silicone hose on there. Hook up the sensor. And that's just about it for that part. So here's our assembly here. 
made out of copper pipe and then painted. We have a couple little brackets down here that it sits in. And so that's just to replace the rubber line that goes all the way up here. So we'll go ahead and install that, even though it's an extra step for most people. At this point, you'd be ready to just use the rubber line all the way up to the uh, rad. So there's our finished assembly in there. It's onto the, the, I guess, the new thermostat housing at the back, all the way up to the rad. You could have used the rubber pipe the whole way and just fed it through and whatnot, but our intake's off and we wanted to make it nice and clean, and so there it is. So the last step will be to put the cover plate on the old thermostat housing, and we're actually gonna remove this stud and use two new bolts. So we'll go ahead and remove the stud. We'll just lock it up with two nuts and take it out. So I have two nuts on there locked up against each other and I'm just gonna back that stud out. It wasn't very tight at all. I just cracked it free and now it's pretty much hand loose. So with that stud out and the face of that all cleaned up, we're gonna go ahead and put that on with two fresh uh, bolts but obviously we need the gasket. So we'll throw the gasket in there and then uh, tighten that down. So we got our gasket there and we'll just thread that in. There we go. Now, yep, the upper rod hose is connected to the back there. All the clamps are tight, all the fittings are tight. Uh, you'll be ready to fill it up with coolant and lead the system. And the nice thing about this is it's got that little bleeder on the back so you can make sure you get all the air out of that hosing. That's it for the install.